Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Witching Hour podcast. I am your host, John Roisland. With me tonight, um, I, I am I'm without words. I am honored. Uh, we have actor, author, Mr. Robert Lasardo uh, is here gracing us with his with his presence this evening. Um, do do a small Q and A with us. Say hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Robert Lasardo, Mr. Lasardo, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy work schedule to join us tonight. My pleasure. Uh, it's been a couple of years since you and I have spoke last, and uh, you've been a very, very busy boy. Uh, just to catch a couple of the uh, of the the listeners up, um, Robert Lasardo is uh, sixty years young, uh, born in Brooklyn, uh, high school for the performing arts. Went on to uh, Stella Stella Adler, excuse me, Stella Adler Studio of Acting. Four years in the Navy, and has had a uh, uh, did boxing, uh, and since then has had a very very long career of acting. Uh, here we are in 2024, only in April, four months into the year, and you already have eight ongoing projects. Eight projects, and it's and it's only in April. That that's amazing. I can't get through one week without screwing something up on my end. How do you manage such a busy schedule, and how do you and how do you manage that without burning out? That's a that's a lot to do. I sleep late. <laughs> <laughs> that that. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, my kids do the same thing some most of the time, too, and they definitely could not carry the load that you are. <laughs> um, so aside from acting, any personal interests uh, that you dabble in that maybe the uh, viewers don't know about? I like to hike. There's a uh, a park not too far from here, uh, where there's a uh, hiking trails and a plethora of trees and deer and all sorts of animals just kind of wandering around. So I go up up in the hiking trail, and uh, that's become kind of a hop. It's become a hobby for me. Now you're in California, correct? Uh. I'm in California. I'm up north. I'm all, all over the place. Okay. Okay. So a break from a break from the studios and the sets gets you out there, kind of a, a peaceful touch with nature, doing some hiking, gets you, uh, get you some exercise because I know you're in tip top shape. Uh, so uh, that's actually something that I could definitely stand to use a little bit more of. Uh, so I can well, definitely, definitely appreciate that. Speak to that point, John. I just think it for me it's important to stay grounded. Sure. There's and something about there's something about walking up on a hiking trail in the woods that you know provides you with uh, an opportunity to observe reality. Right. As sure. it truly is. Sure, sure. And and as busy as you are, I can only imagine how hectic the inside of your mind might be scrambling at times, not scrambling, but, you know, keeping everything in order. So I can imagine the serenity of something like that would definitely, definitely be a big help. Uh, um, so on those rare occasions that you aren't on the set, other than possibly hiking, going on the trails, what does what does Robert Lasardo do to unwind? Any hobbies or anything of that nature? I like to watch movies late at night, preferably um, independent films. It's kind of like going into a library, like back in the old days, you know, mm -hmm. and just looking through a catalog of books you like to read i read too uh not as much lately i do read but it's usually work related um but yeah i think i know my hobby has been and always will be just watching film studying it 
from various points of view, not just as a, an audience being entertained, but also I feel like I can learn from observing cinema, uh -huh. especially independent cinema, because it, they tend to take more risks with that type of storytelling than the mainstream. Right. Sure. No, I can appreciate that. And as far as that goes, is there any, now let me, let me ask it. If you're just wanting to unwind, not so much the, the studying part, which, which I think is, 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 is great. Um, is there any certain genre that you'd like to just pop in an old Western or a good comedy or a good horror fest? Or is that just depend basically on your, on the night you're having? Lately, uh, comedy is key. Yeah, good to have a sense of humor, especially in today's world, John. <laughs> uh, I could agree with you more. Yeah, and uh, comedy and drama. I like stories about real people mm -hmm. who are, uh, are especially in, in terms of the writing. Uh, characters are created and developed in such a way that they're realistic and. Uh, I enjoy watching what I would call slice of life films where you get to observe uh, people, ordinary people, I guess, who are, are placed in extraordinary circumstances and have to overcome that. Whether sure. it's an interpersonal relationship dynamic, whether it's a, an event that's just suddenly upon them, kind of like life. I like w the way certain filmmakers approach that subject and offer some flair and spice to it, you know, because, you know, if you follow someone around every day with a camera watching everything they do, it'd be kind of tedious and not that entertaining. I like that these films uh, showcase certain, the peaks and valleys of that experience, the human experience. So I like to watch films that embrace an aspect of humanity that can inspire, can conjure its audiences to feel things so it's not a dehumanizing event it keeps you in touch with uh, the fabric of relationships that require uh, things like love you know i don't like to watch movies that desensitize desensitize the mind or the being from feeling things huh? all right i can appreciate that sure Something else keeping you in touch. So <clears throat> with all of your background and your training and your ongoing personal training, just studying, like as you mentioned, from watching movies and stuff like that, when you're on set or getting ready to shoot a scene, how do you prepare for your character? How do you prepare your mind frame before going in front of that camera? I feel what's truly important is preparation prior to that event, prior to being on set. Mm -hmm. um, the work that you do weeks before is crucial to build the foundation so that when you get to a set or you're standing in front of a camera, none of that stuff becomes an issue. It's just sheer mechanics. Right. And after a while, the camera, the crew, and everything else just kind of disappears because you've done the research, you've immersed yourself. And so you just manifest at that point. Right. It's just, uh, at that point, it's just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, uh, it's just academic. You know, you already, you're, you, you don't have to try to do anything. You spent time preparing. And so you just come with it. It's already there. You don't have to make it up. You just open the door and you let it out. And you really become one with that character then, or as the character. Uh, well, there I don't, that's two. There's just one. Okay. There's not me becoming one. There's only existing in the moment. And uh, just like in everyday life, you don't, think about how to exist in the moment, do you? You just exist in the moment. Very true. It's the same thing with this. You go deep enough into the writing 
fit into character development to the point where I guess some would say it possesses you or you become that, then you just manifest that. There's no you doing anything. There just is that. Right. So it's just about knowing how to turn it on, but turn it off. Right. Sure. I okay. I I I appreciate that insight. That's 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 coming from a professional like you. I I can definitely you know I'm learn something myself right there. Um. So. Again, with over two hundred acting credits, you've you've had a, a long, beautiful career with this. Um, you've had the opportunity to work with some of the largest names in the industry. Um, you've worked under Scorsese. You've worked with De Niro, Pacino, uh, Eastwood. Um, hell, you, you've even worked alongside of uh, of um, of rock legend D. Snyder. Is there anybody out there that maybe you haven't worked with yet that you'd really love to be able to one day? Let's uh let's come back to that. Okay. Okay. Um let's see, I, I had a couple things jotted down here. Um again, throughout your entire career, thinking back from day one, your smallest role to perhaps your most recent. Um is there any one role? that at the end of the day, you are always most proud of? Not so much the film itself, but one role that you think you just absolutely, I don't want to say didn't nail as opposed to you didn't in other roles, but just that one specific role that you were just so much, just the top of the list for you personally. I have a hard time with labels. Um, in terms of specifically what it is, meaning what the film was, what the show was, whatever. Um, I do recall moments um, on a creative level that I felt fulfilled. Um, you start to realize after a while, John, that, you know, you don't have any control over this thing. The best you can do is just go in with commitment and a love for what you're doing and do it. Right. And uh, sometimes you experience a feeling, uh, a state of, I don't know, creative liberation, if you, you, know, you can call it that that feels sublime and you never know when it's going to happen. You don't know what circumstance is going to happen in it could be something that people perceive as inconsequential, or it could be in an environment where a lot of eyeballs are on it. But regardless of the stage that you're standing on, I think more importantly, it, you realize that you don't have any control over it. And, as much as you don't have control over the finished product. Um, it's not like you're a painter and you're painting a canvas alone. There's other hands in it. So it's outcome ultimately um, is manipulated by others. Right. Um, so I try not to get too attached to the result of that aspect of things. Um, I just have countless experiences where I remember feeling inspired and grateful and mesmerized at my ability, not knowing how I did it. You know, I, I knew what the preparation required. I knew I had to study. I knew I had to uh, do all the things I was trained to do in acting school. But just because you prepare for a fight and do all the physical training and the sparring and 
that's required doesn't mean you're going to win the fight. Um, but you still go in prepared and with your with a focus to, I guess, to honor the agreement, to honor the stage, to honor the material, to honor the director, to honor the producer, to honor the other performers, to honor the whole thing. And you bring all the energy that you can manifest and conjure into that. And whatever happens, happens. And specifically, I, you know, I can't, I don't know if there's one thing in particular that I can nail. What comes to mind recently is something I worked on, a filmmaker friend of mine, very talented director named Josh Weber, completed a film not that long ago, excuse me, not that long ago, originally titled Isaac. The new name is uh, now, uh, the title of the film is Love Me Dead. It's a psychological thriller. And I remember it because it was extremely challenging for me. It was a very... controversial type of a character, I guess. The material is a bit tortured. And when you immerse yourself in aggression or storylines that involve things about people's lives that are not so pretty, it can be a rough ride, but I like to challenge myself. And so um, this film, Isaac, A.K. Isaac, Love Me Dead, I think, I feel very strongly is a departure from so much of the work I've done because, like I said, you don't have control over how the film manifests. You don't have control over the mechanics, the editor, or any of the other stuff that makes or breaks a film or deems it a quality film, a quality movie. I've observed this film. I've been afforded, you know, a good fortune of a friendship with a director that's very rare in this industry where people allow you a ringside view of something like this. So I watched the film and I was amazed because as much as I am grateful for this perennial career, it seems, I don't know if I can actually sum something up in particular other than what I just described as the crowning glory, so to speak, because I don't live in glory. I try not to live in pride. I try to just do the work, and I do, and hope that one day I can work with a competent, competent filmmaker that will allow me more room to perform. And Josh Weber did just that. And oh. so I feel he delivered me from a patterning of filmmaking, I dare say, that's been living in mediocrity. And I don't have any control over that. Right. Like I said, I can bring my best game to the to the circumstance of show, but if the people that are making the movies are not competent enough to produce a quality film, then you know, um, I you know, it's hard to assign any sort of attachment to it. You have to let go, even the good stuff, I guess. If the, if, you, if you're fortunate. Enough, to look over your shoulder and say, yeah, I've got quite a few things I can be grateful for. That's not an easy thing for me to do for some reason. I can't remember more than half of the things I participated in. That's because I'm losing my memory or anything. It's just that it doesn't serve me to live in the past. Um, but since we're talking about this particular subject, because it's in front of me, I can see it. It's not something that happened 15, 20 years ago. This is something that happened recent and the film's going to be released this year. And But unlike so many of the others, it's a coherent, competent, and I feel very impactful movie within the genre of psychological thriller. It really packs a wallop. And to be able to sit down and watch a film that you're participating in and recognize that there are those equal enough greater than what you bring is to me the greatest reward. I've always wanted to work with people better than myself, be directed by 
great filmmakers and be allowed by those filmmakers something more substantial than a, a trivial character without a character arc or something stereotypical that does not indicate intelligence or much room, like I said, for character development. So I would say this film in particular, independent of anything that I'm doing. Wow. Well, you know, thanks. My own film, my own writing, my own production, you know, something independent of me. I mm -hmm. would say it would be this film. Well, that I just mentioned. congratulations for that. That's that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. I will definitely, I'm I'm very anxious to be able to, uh, uh, to keep an eye out and, and definitely take a look at that when it, when it is released. It, um you have to definitely please let me know. Um, I, will. I, I will be very anxious to see that. Um, <clears throat> wow, thank you. Um, um, so w with that, um, we've got a couple minutes left here with the powers that be from Zoom. Um, do you, um, I, I don't know if you wanted to go back and, and see if there's anybody on a bucket list a hit list, so to speak, of, of actors, directors, writers that, you know, anyone out there that you would like to work with that you haven't as of yet. And I say as of yet because you are definitely a busy actor. Uh, I would love to work with Russell Crowe. I could see the two of you definitely hitting something off really good. I could. That would be great. Okay. Um, now, you are also getting behind the camera, I believe, and you are doing a directorial. And I believe it's your debut. Is that correct? Yes. Any uh, Any insight that you can give to us on that? I know it, it, when I when I was reading about it, basically it just said it was just still in pre-production. Didn't say anything else about it. Yeah, it's in post-production. Or post-production, excuse me. Right, okay. okay. And uh, so we're just uh, ironing out, ironing out the edit. Okay. You know, cro cro you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's in the editorial, but we're pretty much there. Um, two notes about it. Um, creatively, I just wanted to free myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the writing. And in how the how was that feeling for you, getting to switch places with everybody? It was liberating to Thank um write something that came from my heart and soul, mm -hmm. and consider a character that made more sense to me than probably any character I've ever played. It was a culmination of everything I've learned and experienced this far, thus far. And then, uh, yeah. You think this is something that you're gonna uh, possibly try to do again? Uh, maybe. Okay. I, I'm not sure about that, but you know, just to be able to make you know, I spoke to a director friend of mine. He said, you know how many people come up to me all the time, Robert, saying they're going to make a movie <laughs> and they don't do it? You actually did it. Right. So I think it's enough of accomplishment for oneself. Sure. To make a film. Okay. And if you can get that film distributed, then good for you. Uh, right. I'm not in the analytics of judgment. I'm not a critic. I'm a creative type. So I'm very forgiving and have a big heart. I don't observe films or the process from the neck up. I observe it from here. Clearly, you need a mind. You need a brain to understand the physics of cinema to make it, you know, coherent, so to speak. But um, I just don't look at it in the conventional sense. I look at it as an opportunity. I was fortunate enough to have enough money to produce this thing on my own. I used my own money. I cast my own actors. And I wrote it. And uh, And that's it. And so I'm grateful to just have that opportunity. What happens after that, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, as far as the story goes, I want to explore the topic of PTSD. Men have come back from the war, mm -hmm. struggle with that because I'm a former, you know, I'm a former 
I'm former military. I'm a vet. So I wanted to not play a, portray a convict because I haven't been in prison. I've been in the military and served honorably for four years and was discharged. So I wanted to tell a story that was more true to my actual experience in life and then use some fictional elements to communicate a story as well about environmental pollution in our world, physical pollution and the psychic pollution in the minds of our communities that's collapsing our society. Wow. Oh. Well, congratulations on that. I mean, I do sincerely mean that. That's a great feat. And um, I uh, is there a title? Yeah. The name of the film is titled American Trash. American Trash. I am definitely going to keep my eye out for that one. And you definitely have my number. So um, I'm I would love, love to see your director debut. That is that's awesome. Congratulations Thanks, on that. John. No, Appreciate I mean you. that. I do. Congratulations. Um, in closing, uh, a little bit cliche. Uh, as you know, The Witching Hour is primarily a horror-based um, podcast. Um, and I know that you've had your share of horror films that you've, you've partaken in. All horror movies throughout history. Do you happen to have a favorite one? Yes, I do. Uh, it's not categorized as horror, although ironically, the lead character at the very end, before he dies, communicates those words. He says, he says, the horror. The horror. So the horrors of war, you know, apocalypse now to me is a highbrow, highbrow horror film because it shows you parts of darkness and into the minds of madness of men that go down the rabbit hole to survive an illegal, insane war. But then all wars are all wars are insane, right? right. So that to me is a horror film. Touche. No, I, I get you. I, I do. I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And that's what some people that I've spoken to just don't understand that, you know, the word horror doesn't necessarily mean it's a slasher or a butcher film there are so many mental different aspects of the word horror of terror to each individual so uh i commend you for that and uh i also thank you for your service i, I sincerely do thank you very much um so robert that's that's what we've got today unfortunately we have run out of time um i can't thank you enough um, please uh, keep in touch with me. It's been great to sit down and talk to you again. Like I said, it's mm -hmm. been a couple of years. I will definitely be looking out for your movie. Um, uh, in closing, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Lasardo. it's been an honor and a pleasure to see you again. Robert, you take care of yourself and thank you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Be sure to check me out on all social media. Hit subscribe and as always, keep it evil. Mr. Lasardo, thank you again, sir.